So, lass mal gucken, weil hier hat nämlich ein äh, GT3, also wir haben ja letztens schon mal nach den Voff-Einstellungen von ihm geguckt, aber er erzählt jetzt ein bisschen was zu seinen Force-Feedback-Einstellungen. Das würde mich mal interessieren. Gucken wir mal. Your sim to feel as realistic as possible. In this series, I'm going to help guide you through how to make your sim feel as close to reality as possible. In the first episode, we spoke about seating position and ergonomics. In this episode... So neidisch auf deine Pedale. Gönn dir. Bin positiv neidisch. Gönn dir und genieße. We're going to talk about steering settings and force feedback. Hey guys, I'm Daniel Morad, professional GT driver. And today I want to share with you my experience in the real car and how it, how it translates to sim racing in terms of steering wheel and force feedback. There's a huge misconception in the sim racing community where you think you need to have maximum feedback, a lot of steering strength, all the detail, all the jolts and curb strike information. But in, in fact, it's not entirely true. I actually have my settings dialed down quite a bit and it's okay. quite smooth actually. I'm personally using a SimiCube uh, 2 Pro at the moment and the SimiCube software. I'm sharing all my information in this video if you guys are using SimiCube but I don't want to limit this video just to that product. I know that it can be used across various steering wheels uh, that you guys may have out there. So uh, we're going to jump in the rig. But before that, I just want to mention that if you want any more information on this topic or any other topic in terms of sim racing and how it translates to reality, I'm streaming on Twitch three or four times a week when I'm in town and not away at a race. So you can join my Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash moradness you can jump in be active in the chat ask anything you want and i'm uh, hopefully going to answer it if i see it if i'm not racing i'll try my best um let's jump over to the rig and we'll go through some of my settings and kind of what that translates to in so ein schwarzes zimmer würde ich ja auch fühlen das würde ich glaube ich auch fühlen so ein richtig schönes schwarzes dunkles zimmer ja oh. henry grüße dich reality in the sim or in the sim we're just gonna go on the sim now i figured the best way to explain and to try to articulate what i'm feeling with my hands on the wheel is to be actually in my sim and to to drive some laps and i'll just drive around and give you my live impressions on what i'm feeling behind the wheel and how that's translating to the real car so let's jump in the car now and go for a few laps so the first thing that i'm really feeling behind the wheel is the strength that's the thing i want to try to emulate the belt straight down uh, i'm just going to start with that and there's a misconception with how hard the wheel needs to be everyone thinks oh you need 25 feet liters you need 30 feet liters uh but in fact all that's wrong but the weight of the wheel of a car like a gt3 or a gt4 car and the mercedes gt3 or gt4 that i'm driving in particular is around i would say 12 ish meters uh, uh sorry about my voice the motion just i find that's very witzig that's really is important uh yeah about probably 12 meters i would say it's not that strong it, you know it's equating to around 30 pounds if you're using pounds as a form of measurement uh you know, over a period of time, like in a race, it does tire you out a little bit, but we have power steering assistance. So, I mean, you're not looking for just the stiffest, hardest wheel uh, possible. You're looking for control. And and uh, I've driven the car without power steering. It's not fun. It's actually nearly impossible to, to turn. It doesn't work. Kurzer Einruf von uh, dem Lieblingsteil uh, uh, einer eine Zoom Racing Community. Äh, früher hatten wir auch alle keine Assists, Junge. Da sind wir doch eben immer Anhänger rum. Traktionskontrolle, was soll der Schrott, Alter? Powersteering, da muss ich mal richtig ackern, nur wie Arnold früher. Da muss ich so eine Bizeps gehabt, als wir Rollader fahren. So, we have power steering assistance. Um, of course, the steering wheel dimensions are going to impact what you're feeling as well. So, for me, I'm using a 300mm wheel. In the real car, I'm using a 330mm wheel in the Mercedes. Uh, GT3 and GT4 it's using a very similar steering bill. Das Lenkrad ist übrigens das geilste Lenkrad überhaupt von Mercedes. Das ist so simpel und so geil. And the bigger the wheel, you have to keep in mind, the more leverage you have. So, the you know, the different strength you'll have on, on the wheel. So, if you have a 270 millimeter diameter, you'll, you'll need uh, lower force feedback. Or to dial your settings in-game a little bit down. 
in in SimuCube, I typically run the settings on why well, not typically i am running the settings on the maximum force feedback and in iris it I down the max force feedback effect so it takes a percentage of that it basically scales it so i i've doubled so i'm using 25 newton meters on my semi cube 2 pro and i have 50 newton meters of max force in game which is essentially cutting that up, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on the calculation of this petition over here, but it feels about right. So I'm just going based on the feel within my hand, what this actually feels like in front and of all of my hands. The weight is about right. I mean, about 20, it, yeah, uh, let's say 30 pounds of force, uh, 12, 12 ish, 12 to 13 Newton meters of uh, total force. On it. Moving on, we can talk about the road texture and detail of the wheel. I think that uh, I've been guilty of this in the past, having a little bit too much road texture, and it almost takes away from my experience. Ja, er ist richtiger Rennfahrer, ja. Deswegen ist es super interessant, was er dazu halt mal sagt, weil er fährt halt in einem Auto und kann das besser übersetzen. So, it's just, it was too violent, and... I, I prefer to have the violence through my body, <laughs> through through the motion a little bit, and like the jolts and having those sort of jolting effects. I'd rather that come through the haptic feedback if if you have the opportunity uh, to do that. Say again. <laughs> through either a uh, uh, low frequency mo uh, like sound uh, speaker or uh, like a vi vibration motor. That's a really good way to emulate the road texture. But in terms of like in your hands, you can see when I strike the curb, you know, the steering wheel doesn't move too, too much. It absorbs quite a bit of that impact. And it's, it's great. Like I can feel definitely the curb strikes. Like you know, I'm holding the grip lightly. You can see how the, the wheel moves, right? It, it moves a little bit. And that's pretty realistic for the real car, right? Because I'm hitting the curb with the steering wheel, or sorry, the, 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 the wheel, which directly impacts the steering wheel. So I strike the curb. You can see how it moves. I still don't use that texture, but... It's not cranked up. I have a lot of damping in the wheel, actually, in the SimiCube software, and uh, more than most. And I used to have not a lot of damping. Actually, I've had all the way down to zero, no damping, all just raw sedatives. And although you could feel the road quite a bit and all those curb strikes, I did feel like it was realistic. And for me, I'm using this good trading. I want it. I want the steering wheel to feel as real as possible. So I've kind of dialed down my um, settings or I guess you could say dialed up my settings in terms of damping and smoothed out the steering effect. Uh, that's also allowing me to feel, right? Don't confuse that with a loss of detail. I can still feel the car lose control. Like if I turn in, I can feel the understeer in the middle, the middle of the corner, like there, the wheel's light. I can feel the understeer. Or on the other side, like my turn in, like there, I can feel that snap oversteer. So I could still feel the oversteer and understeer in the wheel, but I have a lot of damping in it. So those like road textures, curb strikes aren't overpowering my experience behind the wheel. Gott, ist es jetzt so weit, dass ich nach drei Jahren oder so meine Simucube Einstellung ändere und das probiere? On the setting side, I um, I think there's a few things that huh. I basically just leave the same all the time. That's the overall strength. I always leave that at 100% and I adjust that in sim to uh my accord to the value i want essentially and um i just want to use the full strength of the the motor and control that in in game so there's no clipping and in terms of steering range i'm always rocking 900 degrees i think um i've coached a few people where they've had 270 and it's quite tricky when it's like that because it it uh when you turn a little bit, it's fine, but as you turn more and more, the wheel like starts to really rotate quickly. So you just want 900 degrees to match the same rate of the way you're turning the wheel. You'll notice that your hands in sim, if you have your steering wheel and hands on, when you turn and you're at 90 degrees, you'll notice that your hands are matching what the driver is doing in, in sim. Um, so yeah, 900 degrees is what I have in the race car and what I'm using in sim. Uh, the bump stop feel, I'm running it on soft and 900 degree lock uh, just to match the same steering wheel range. Um, and then we go down to 
the filters. This confused me. 25 Minuten mit, der macht keinen Spaß, Leute. Ich habe das auf Spar ausprobiert für ein YouTube-Video. <lacht> also ist Workout. Kann man sagen. Ist, ist ein Workout. A lot before I understood what this all means and, and just basically going through the range. And I've arrived at uh, four on the reconstruction filter and uh, 2200 hertz on torque bandwidth. And essentially it's just a, a limit for the high frequency ja, ja. and low frequency. Uh, Ist doch das Sinnvollste. Also immer, wenn es geht, auf volle Pulle aufdrehen und dann in-game runterregeln. Das ist das Simpelste. Vibrations and... Nee, äh, Rühmbauer, er passt das noch in-game an. Also die 25 Newtonmeter, die man da jetzt sieht, werden in-game runtergedreht. Er hat nur im Treiber 100%. Angepeilt sind so 13, 12, äh, 12 bis 14. Notchiness effect. So, it's kind of something that you just need to go through and try. 900 Grad, das sind 900 Grad äh, Lenkwinkel. Also in GT3 oder was heißt GT3? In GT3 ist es weniger, aber das Spiel passt das meistens an. 900 Grad entspricht so der Realität. Das heißt, wenn ihr beispielsweise in-game seid und ihr lenkt und ihr macht mal das äh, Lenkrad in-game an, sollte die Hand, wenn die hoch geht oder die andere, sollte immer auf der Hand in-game sein. Try for yourself. And it's nothing that really impacts what it should feel like in real life but you don't want to feel any sort of vibration or weird effects as you're turning the wheel in the corner or if you're going down the straight you don't want to have like super weird vibrations high frequency vibrations or notchiness when you're when you're turning or like this grainy sand effect when you're turning in for the corner so just gotta go through the settings and figure out what works for you and what's best um down to the fun stuff you have like these few settings which affect you in eye racing and this is prelim uh, primarily going to be focused around eye racing because that's the sim that i prefer to use at this current time and um when i first attempted to make this profile this is my gt3 profile i uh i, I just basically had everything off and then i started going one by one increasing and decreasing values and just going to see what it all did until it made the wheel vibrate like crazy and I had to use the emergency stop, um, which is good. But yeah, I just, I found that I wanted a certain amount of damping in the car. And you know, when you, when you have damping on, I'll show you what that looks like when it's completely off. We'll go for a run and just see what, what this actually means. So going through uh, the first turn, we'll just set an active reset point, um, to return. Three, two, two and three at Royal Atlanta. You can see there's like a, a jolting effect. Here. And let's try, let's try that now with uh, damping up quite a bit. Let's just go to like. Ich habe letztens gerade jemanden in der YouTube Kommentare gehabt, der sich darüber aufgeregt hat, dass äh, jemand bei sich Damping angemacht hat in den Einstellungen. <lacht> Das war übrigens einer dieser Leute wahrscheinlich, die ohne TC und immer gib ihm. 50% Damping. Okay. And. Curse. Go through. And there's a lot less force in, in the wheel. A lot less. Uh, yeah, basically. Uh, <laughs> the jolting effect is. A it's, it's softer. It feels more spongy in my hands. Rather than a jolt, an aggressive jolt in my hands, it's very spongy and a little bit more lazy. Um, that's why I found that I, I kind of like 20%, around 20% damping was nice for me. In terms of friction, it's just like how um, much uh, resistance and yeah, it, essentially it's the resistance you have in the wheel. So if I have no friction, I can just turn the wheel very easily. If I add friction in, let's say I add 20%, it's it's stiffer to turn like i can feel some resistance as i steer back and forth which is simulating the weight of the car and the tires being in contact with the ground if the tires were in the air then you have no friction you can just turn easily but when it's on the ground you have some sort of resistance when you turn back and forth even though you have the power steering you still have a level of resistance i had that down at 10 percent. I, i liked it at 10 it felt pretty realistic for me when i turned the wheel back and forth this is kind of what it's like with the power steering assistance in my Mercedes AMG GT3, GT4. Um, in terms of inertia, let's just try with, so I'm running 20%, let's try zero. Let's just see what that looks like and we'll do the active reset. So with zero inertia, you have like this, th 
it, it basically wants to return to center uh, very easily. Like it has this very lightweight, lightweight pendulum effect where it wants to swing the rear and it's almost overreacting to the car wiggling back and forth. And I, I feel like it doesn't happen that quickly in real life. Like it really is active. I can feel so, I can feel like the rear really, like as I start to steer back and forth, it really wants to unwind quickly for me. So I can feel the slide, okay. but it's almost too much and I get this like oscillation effect. Uh, clipping bedeutet, dass um, du auf deiner Wheelbase zu viel Force Feedback hast und dir dann Details flöten gehen. Unten rechts bei ACC kann man immer sehen, dass das äh, Rot angezeigt wird. Dann gehen dir Details flöten von deinem Force Feedback. Die spürst du dann nicht. Das ist zu viel Kraft auf dem Motor quasi. Which I don't want. So I, I want to try to remove that and uh, oh, 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 help. Take it easy. I, um, I had this around um I had this around 20 percent um i had it around 20 percent on my my profile so um with too much let's just go let's just go ag aggressive we'll go 40. let's go 40 go to active reset and now i'm getting some sort of like weird feedback in my hands where it's almost not wanting to return but i'm getting this vibration which um i don't really like so i kind of ran it around 20 just because I wanted to give that sensation that it's it's um that it's returning to center like if I feel the rear of the car moving around I wanted to have this unwinding effect but I don't want it to be um so quick that I almost get like this pendulum swing in the rear of the car so moving on to st static force reduction that's um something I mentioned earlier in the video and static force reduction is really helpful in, in a car with power steering because as you go through a corner with like high high forces and high loading on the tire you uh typically in like a non-power steering car you'd feel the weight of the wheel increase but in a power steering car it's not really increasing it's staying very constant so you have like a very similar weight whether you're in a low speed corner or a high speed corner so i had the static force reduction at i have it at 30 percent um quite high because I want to try to reduce that force mid corner so you can run a higher average weight through the wheel so you can keep it very consistent but at the same time um yeah you can get the the feedback the weight all consistent but when you go through a high speed corner it doesn't increase and like get super super difficult to to turn as you turn the wheel more and more and put more and more load in the tire so that's why i chose 30 percent. if we try it let's just try zero percent go with the active reset here and um I mean, as I turn in, it's, oh, okay, you really feel the difference. It's very light in the middle range of, of the wheel. Like, so right here, it's quite light. And then as I turn more, it gets really heavy as I add more steering angle. At, yeah, I mean, you just really feel it. How, so far, ich übrigens. How it's increasing the weight. <laughs> oh. uh, let's try this now with, let's try with a really high static force reduction. Let's go to like uh, 50%. Let's see what happens. Active preset. Yeah, so the wheel is like incredibly light. It's, it's it's too light now for me. It feels funny. Like I can just zigzag it back and forth. And as I go, <laughs> as I turn the wheel more and more, it actually feels like it almost gets lighter. Like here it gets light, almost too light. And that's what happens when the wheel is light. Don't be that guy. So we're just active presetting again. I'm trying with my original settings. So for around 30% uh, static force reduction. And that just feels right, right. Oh, it, that feels right for me. Uh, it's the right amount of force reduction. As I turn into the corner, it just, it gets light enough where I just start to feel the tires slipping actually. And you can feel when the understeer starts to creep in, especially in the Mercedes, typically it's understeering balance where it should be. And it's fast that way. It's a very stable platform, which is why a lot of uh, a lot of gentleman drivers in the real world tip leaning towards this car. It's nice to drive. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's, it's a more pleasant experience to drive this car because it's not trying to like snap over steer all the time. It's just really balanced and stable. The final two settings are kind of, well. The slew rate is similar to damping. It's just reducing how quick the torque of the motor 
uh, is reacting to what is being fed from the game. So ich erinnere mich gerade, dass ich das nicht vergleichen kann, was ich gerade habe. Das müssen wir danach machen, wenn ich den Rechner hochgefahren habe. You would think that you'd want slew rate off because you want the fastest most uh, amount of information, but it's almost too much for me in, in my hands. I feel like it's jolty. So, I want to get those feelings in my body. So, you know, I, I typically in a perfect world, you'd want to have a, a, a butt kicker or D-box or some sort of vibration. But if you don't have that, it still can be off-putting to have all the jolting effect. So if you curb strike or if you buzz a curb, you get a lot of vibration in your hands. It's almost too much detail. So for me, I actually turn slew rate up to, well, around one. It's 0.99 in my settings. And that felt really good because it just took out the jolting. So like I said, it's similar to damping, but uh, different because it just reduces. It's not so much sponging it up. It's more reducing the shock and that jolting effect that you would get in your hand. So we can actually give this a try and we can try with it off and see what that does for the active reset. So when I strike a curve, you, I just feel like I feel ich sehe mich selber fahren, immer wenn er das aufs Maximum dreht oder aus. I can't really see it, but I can just feel the vibration in my hand and the joltiness. It's very like uh, very aggressive like it's just too much detail in my hands i want a softer feel and that's oh. essentially what it's giving you it's a softer feel in your hand so you're not getting these like micro jolts let's um let's give it a try with uh a pretty high let's go with like let's go five if you have a bisschen ertappt let's say around roughly five on the slew rate and let's see what happens with the activities so now the wheel just feels completely dead like I can feel it trying to, I mean, you see, I just had no feeling whatsoever uh, in the wheel. So it, it's very numb. I can still feel the uh, the effect where it wants to unwind, but there's like no road texture at all in the wheel. It's very, very numb feeling. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I have never, also erstens, halt, hold the phone. Ich habe niemals gesagt, dass es die perfekten Einstellungen sind. Zweitens sind es nicht meine Einstellungen. <lacht> Drittens, für mich funktionieren sie sehr, sehr gut mit dem Wissensstand, den ich die letzten drei Jahre hatte. See what, what it's like, Cass Corner. Yeah, it's like very lazy and like non... Und es gibt übrigens auch sehr, sehr viele Menschen da draußen, die genau dieses Profile fahren. Non-responsive. So you still want a little bit of feedback in your hands. At the end of the day, you're not getting every sensation from uh, the D-Box or a haptic feedback motor. You still want to get a little bit of feedback in your hands. And I found that running somewhere around one was pretty accurate for me. So that's, let's try to get it right on one. Boom, my OCD is feeling good about that. So let's go with the active reset one more time and just see what that feels like with my original settings. Let's see if we actually fit an apex. Oh, beautiful. Just absolutely lovely. This is where I'm feeling really comfortable. And I spoke too soon. Cool. We're going to cut that out. Are we going to cut that out? We'll see. <laughs> Ultra low latency mode is something I've tuned based on trial and error, just going out and consistently just adjusting. 1% at a time. I let go of my wheel on the straight and I just want to see if it's oscillating back and forth. You know, a lot of you may get that oscillation effect where the car is just jiggling and tip like when you release your hands on the wheel, you you don't want the car to oscillate back and forth. It doesn't happen in the real car. You can take your hands off the wheel and it tracks straight. It's always tracking straight. So that's where and how I arrived at 10% on the ultra low latency mode, but you just need to try for your yourself. Every wheel is different. The weight of the wheel is different. The way it, it um, jiggles back and forth. So yeah, 10% is good for me. And uh, that's just something that is not so much a, a, a setting that is making it feel realistic. It's just something that it's a quality of life thing where you want the, the car to drive straight when you let go of the wheel. You don't want it to be oscillating back and forth, especially if you have forces or jolts from curb strikes it will have that oscillation effect when you come off the curb. So just try to get it where you can take your hands off the wheel, drive in a straight line, and you don't have any sort of oscillation back and forth. Okay. 
I hope this video helps you guys dial in your steering wheel settings and helps eliminate those misconceptions on how you should be setting up your wheel to emulate reality. I know there was a lot to go through and not everyone's using Simicube software like myself, but if you are, you can simply just click one button and use my profile on the Simicube True Drive software. I have a GT3 profile and a prototype profile at the moment, at the current time of recording. I'll be working on more profiles in the future for single seater cars, whether it's Formula One or any other junior formulas. If you're not using Simicube profiles, there are a lot of settings there, tips and tricks that could help you with whatever software you're using to try to get the ultimate immersion and <clears throat> blend your sim with reality. And thank you so much for actually watching all the way up to this point as well. It does mean a lot. I mean, I said this before in past videos, we've just started on YouTube and uh, I hope to be making videos far into the future and helping you guys with information that I can share from real life into the sim racing community and not just limited to that, but also sharing my real life racing with everyone. Uh, and like I said, if you've made it to this point, it would mean a lot if you hit the like and subscribe button. I got to work on this spiel right here. I'm going to get better at it and the bell notification thing that there's a thing there as well right for that mm. so you can be notified for the future videos ich mach das ich mach das jetzt für dich pass auf ich mach das jetzt an und ich mache auch die glocke an ich like das ding und schreibe auch einen kommentar das war der falsche account aber ist egal is where i connect my real life racing with the simulator so uh, thanks again and we'll catch you guys in a future video okay danke schön für das Video. Ich bin sehr gespannt. Hey Siri, hey Siri, schalte Rick an. Dann äh, gucke ich jetzt mal bei mir rein. Lass mich mal überraschen.